Today's video has been sponsored by Cook Unity. Hello my peeps and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's rendition of the why is everybody so creative tests, aka the crime against the culinary arts tests, we have a variety of, one can say unique, recipes to try out because evidently these people will never stop. I apologize in advance to any doctors or nurses out there if any of you are watching this, but let's get right into this one. From the cheesy spaghetti hot dogs to the Dr. Pepper brownies, the Shaba Kitchen's newest pasta bake monstrosity and the literal wine pie, these recipes are a surefire way to ruin any unsuspecting relative's holiday season. So it is a great thing that you're also about to have a way to more than make it up to them and or treat yourself with the help of my friends over at Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first ever chef to you delivery service that brings restaurant quality meals directly to your door. You've heard about the meal kit subscriptions and the heat and serve fridge filler options out there, but Cook Unity has arrived to turn everything you thought you knew about online meal delivery on its head. Cook Unity partners with award-winning chefs to offer you a wide range of meals with a variety of dietary preferences including vegan, paleo, gluten-free, and more. You simply set your preferences and tell them what you like, choose your meals from their hundreds of dishes and ever-changing menus, receive your meals in their environmentally responsible packaging, and heat and enjoy. I cannot describe what a relief it is to know that I have restaurant-quality meals just minutes away once I get home after a long and stressful day. And this time around, I had the chipotle maple glazed salmon, the short rib tacos, and the harissa chicken thighs over yellow rice by chef Jose Garces. I simply heated them up in my oven and 10 minutes later was enjoying them as if the chef themselves walked through the door and placed it on my table. And as we all know, life is unpredictable, so Cook Unity offers you the option to pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. So do yourselves a favor and go to cookunity.com slash seymour50 or click the link in the top line of the description and use my code seymour50 to get 50% off of your first order of Cook Unity. First up, in today's gauntlet of ill-placed human intervention, we've got this hot dog pasta bacon roll-up with baked cheese and sauce. I grabbed some spaghetti, marinara, bacon, and hot dogs, and then just white and yellow American cheeses. Starting off strong, as you all can see, and before any of you get mad at me for wasting my time, Many of you have sent this my way. It has 25 million views, probably more by now. It's obviously caught the attention of a lot of people, and that's kind of what the spirit of these videos are anyway, so let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. I started by pricking some uncooked spaghetti in my hot dogs, about 14 noodles a piece, placing those in a high-rimmed pan in order to pour some boiling water in, cook everything through, and then roll these all up like hair on a curling iron, wrap those in bacon, cook the bacon off for a little bit, thank God, um, and then bake them with some of the sauce and cheese. I don't think I could have done these at all if we just put the raw bacon in the oven. You guys know how I feel about that. But pretty much every step of this process was a disaster, from the bacon wrapping and then cooking them off, the pasta kept wanting to poke out the sides. I tried to use some toothpicks to keep everything together. It was somewhat working. It just kind of reminds you that pasta is not meant to behave in this manner, especially good quality stuff. I don't know why I wasted that expensive pack on this. And eventually I was able to get somewhere. Um, don't ask me exactly where that is, but let's just give it a taste. It's another rude reminder of what it is exactly my job is. Um, what a mess. The famous hot dog wrapped in pasta, wrapped in bacon and American cheese, just like grandma used to make. <laughs> Boy, if the Italians thought that the spaghetti and meatballs and the chicken parm was too far, I would love to hear what they think of this. I just, I don't know what to say. It's exactly what you imagine, it tastes how you imagine. I guess I'm happy that the bacon is cooked. As I said, a lot of times in tomfoolery such as this, the bacon's not even edible because it's still so raw and chewy. But this is edible. That's about the extent of the positive feedback I can give it. Do I recommend any human under any circumstance ever makes this? No. Up second today is kind of a micro trend that took place over on TikTok over the summer. They are the Dr. Pepper brownies. And for those, I grabbed some Dr. Pepper and brownie mix, powdered sugar, flaky sea salt, and butter. By the way, I hope you guys don't mind the Halloween set sticking around for a bit longer. I feel like it took me so long to build, I wanted to really savor it. But it will be going away very soon, so savor it while you can. 
As for this recipe, um, talk about nostalgia, being that this is a brownie recipe. It's probably the 200th we've done on the channel. But also the act of combining just straight up soda with a boxed cake or brownie mix. We made a whole video about combining sodas and different cakes, and to my memory, I think they were all pretty good. Which was really surprising because you're replacing eggs and oil and butter with just soda. In my brain, it doesn't seem like it should work out, but somehow it does. And the big change with this one is also whipping up a little Dr. Pepper caramel glaze to pour over the top of this. It took about 20 minutes or so to reduce the soda down with a little bit of butter. And all that was left to do was top this bad boy with some flaky salt and the powdered sugar a little drizzle of our caramel. At the very least, it's not like we're spending hours or days on any of this stuff, so even if these are half decent, they may just be worth it. Quite unsuspecting this one is. If somebody just handed me this, I wouldn't think anything weird of it. It's pretty good. It's better than I expected it to be. I would say the brownie part itself leans pretty dry. I'm not sure if it needed more soda. I was kind of just going on um, replacing the actual volume that the box called for, as well as just going based on the look of the batter itself. So it probably could have used some more. Um, it also just doesn't taste like soda. The only part you get any kind of soda adjacent flavor is obviously from that syrup, which is really good. Um, the top of this and the edges are the best part. I was expecting maybe a hint of bitterness. I feel like if you reduce any kind of soda that much, um, you run the risk of burning a lot of the sugar, but this is pretty good. The salt adds a nice balance. It's not overly sweet with the extra powdered sugar. This one gets my stamp of approval, perhaps shockingly. It does need a few minor tweaks, but overall, not too shabby. Next up on today's menu of Demented Derelictions, we've got the return of the Shaba Kitchen and one of her famous, or should I say infamous, pasta bakes. I acquired some baby spinach and heavy cream, chicken stock, butter, olive oil, parmesan cheese, orzo pasta, and crushed red pepper flakes, mushrooms, Dijon mustard, a borson cheese, and mozzarella cheese, an onion, a lemon, garlic, sun-dried tomatoes, salt and pepper, fresh parsley, thyme, basil, and oregano. Lots of things to cover with this one. Firstly, just by the amount of ingredients, you could probably tell that this is gonna be a lot of work. Definitely the most labor-intensive recipe I've seen from the Shaba Kitchen, just in the prep work of all the components that go into this pasta. From the chopping up of all your herbs, the dicing of the onion, the slicing up and cooking down of the mushrooms, the roasting off of the garlic heads. It might take an hour or two just to get to the point of throwing all this crap together in the pan to bake it off. With that being said though, all this stuff looks good. Nothing looks out of place. It's not overkill with the amount of cheese, like a lot of her videos. This should be very flavorful with the chicken stock, the lemon juice. The only thing you could maybe raise an eyebrow at are the sun-dried tomatoes. I don't think I've seen these used in a recipe since 2003. And you may be asking yourself why this time around I elected to use a disposable tinfoil pan for all this. The last time I made one of her pasta bakes, I was scrubbing Valveeta cheese out of my glass pan for two days. This pan is gonna hold the same amount of stuff as hers did, so don't you worry. You may also be wondering why she so meticulously decided to place each one of her ingredients on top of her mixture. I mean, even down to the salt and pepper, if you did it as she did, you would have quite a few salty bites. But don't you worry, because once she gets everything down in your pan, you mix it all up anyway. It's just another one of those things that I will never understand. Maybe she does it for a reason. Maybe it increases interactions on her video. As far as the baking goes, she mentions you should cook this twice. The first time for about 15 minutes, and then pull it out, mix everything together with the spinach and cheese, and then put it back in there for just five more minutes. There's just no way all that liquid's gonna be absorbed in only 20 minutes in the oven. I think I had to leave this in for another 25 on top of the first 15. It wasn't looking half bad. The pasta looked cooked, it smelled really good, so Miss Shaba, let's see what you got for us today. You're lying if you say that this doesn't look good. It just kind of looks like a risotto with a lot of other stuff. 
It tastes like a risotto too. Um, obviously a pasta version, but this is delicious. It's cheesy and creamy. It's well seasoned. It's shockingly well cooked. I love almost everything in here. All the fresh herbs, the spinach, the mushrooms. I still might leave out the sun-dried tomatoes. Um, that's just me though. But overall, I'm genuinely shocked at how good this is. I will probably be sitting here and eating the rest of this. Definitely the best thing I've ever seen from the Shaba Kitchen. And finally, to top this train wreck off is the red wine pie from Adley on TikTok. And I gathered together some sugar, red wine, and flour, some ground cinnamon, balsamic glaze, and if you thought I was gonna make a homemade pie crust for this, you are sadly mistaken. We will instead be using the rest of the puff pastry from the video last week. This one has been on my personal list for almost a year, I wanna say. I just haven't had an excuse to do it, and the reason is because, obviously, this looks so stupid. There's no way that dumping a bottle of wine in a pie crust is ever gonna work, right? Well, there is precedent to this. If you remember a while back, people were making Sprite pies, even a water pie, I remember seeing, and they kinda all come together in the same way. Into your liquid, you dump a whole boatload of sugar and flour without stirring. Everyone make sure you don't forget about that. The only thing that this one was missing was the butter on the top, and maybe there's a reason for that. And in the most comedic timing of all time, as I was getting my hopes up for this, I went to check her video to see how long she bakes it. 350 for seven minutes, you guys. That's it, seven minutes. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that. If I realized that she said seven minutes, I would have never written this down. I would have known it was a troll. But maybe she meant 70, so I left it in there, and no. Maybe she just forgot the butter to help this set up like all the other liquid pies. And still no. But maybe she forgot to mention you gotta put this in the fridge to chill. Obviously that's what it needs to firm up. And the next day, this looked like one of the most grotesque things I've ever created in my life. Between the butter pooling on top and the gloopy texture of this when I tried to get a piece, there are many times in life where I ask myself, why do I do these things? And this is another one of those. I often forget I have to eat these things, and <laughs> like, not just making them for fun and laughs, but here goes nothing. I really tried to hold it together. <laughs> I just, I could not do the texture. The flavor isn't as terrible as you would imagine, especially when you first taste it. The aftertaste is horrific, don't get me wrong, after you swallow or spit it out. But that texture, and just this entire thing, is one of the weirdest food items I think I've ever seen. If you can even call this food, I don't know. Um, I was hoping to be able to say, maybe if you're a wine lover, or you're the adventurous type, and wanna try something new, but consider this one busted, fully. Do not waste your time or energy or mental capacity. On the bright side, I would have bet that all of these recipes went the direction of this one today, so two for four isn't so bad. 